Okay, we might make a start to today's seminar. I'd like to welcome everyone today um, to the seminar. Next, please, Tony. So I'm the facilitator for today. I'm Chris O'Brien. I'm a research fellow in the Center of Horticultural Science here at our Long Pocket facility. Next, please. Uh, before we start the uh, seminar, I'd like to have the acknowledgement of country, um, acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. I pay respect to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognize their valuable contributions to Australia and global society. Next. So just a bit of housekeeping for today's seminar. The seminar is scheduled for 12 to 1 p.m. Uh, at the conclusion of the seminar, there'll be a question and uh, answers section. Could I please ask everyone to put the Q&A questions in the Q&A section, not the chat section, and we'll address those at the end of the seminar. Next. It gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Janie. I've been working with Janie for around 10 years at, at this facility and uh, over at St. Lucia. She is a plant biotechnologist at the Queensland or Coffee here at the University of Queensland. She did her PhD uh, with us and she was the first one to develop a avocado tissue culture micropropagation uh, technique. And it's quite a big discovery. Uh, people have been trying to do that for the last 50 years and she cracked it. Uh, she's now branching this technology out into other, other species such as Duboisia and cannabis. And I'll now hand over to Janie to uh, give her presentation. Thank you so much, Chris. Um... I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the land on which we meet today and pay my respect to the um, uh, ancestors and their descendants. Okay. All right, I have a problem in moving the slides. Okay. So uh, thank you so much for the opportunity um, to talk about this topic that I really love and I'm passionate about. Today, I'm gonna um, talk about tissue culture and how it is an essential toolkit for crop improvement and productivity. So I assume that everyone knows this very simple definition of tissue culture. It is the aseptic culture of cells, tissues, organs, and components under um, controlled con environment under in vitro conditions. And if you look at the um, history of uh, tissue culture, um, it really started in 1885, like, you know, um, a century ago, actually, uh, by Wilhelm Brox, um, looking at um, animal cells, how to tissue culture or how to culture animal cells in salt water. Um, and the tissue culture concept really developed in uh, 1910, again, uh, by uh, uh, animal scientist Alex Carroll. Um, and then the Next, like say, um, uh, 1980s to 1990s, people have been, you know, looking at uh, growing uh, mammalian embryonic stem cells and things like that um, over that time. Um, plant tissue culture really originated in 1992 um, with the concept of 40% potency of the plant cells. And we consider the uh, Gerig Habenton as the father of plant tissue culture. I will talk to you about what is totipotency. It's, it's the concept or it's the phenomena that uh, every single cell has, uh, has the potential to grow into an individual plant or individual organism. And we also discuss um, two different terminologies within tissue culture, de-differentiation and re-differentiation. So de-differentiation is the tissue culture. In tissue culture, uh, we take differentiated cells and we change the state of that cells into lesser differentiated or stem cell-like state. And re-differentiation re is actually the other way around where um, these undifferentiated or less differentiated cells are changed into more differentiated forms of uh, cells. 
So when we look at tissue culture, it has its pegs in everywhere. Um, actually speaking, tissue no, no scientist, I think in plant uh, improvement space can uh, escape tissue culture and it, it is widely spread. But we all um, think that tissue culture is just propagation of plants, just growing a little you know, plant from starting from a small uh, piece of tissue in a in vitro environment. Uh, the biggest application of tissue culture around the globe is actually the clonal propagation. So clonal propagation of plants to produce two to type plants um, of allied cultivars. Um, it, it, has, it started from very uh, simple plants like, you know, uh, banana, uh, um, orchids and strawberries, but but now it is panning into uh, really difficult crops like many woody crops over the last uh, couple of or 10 years, I would say. Also, tissue culture is applied in cell culture and bioreactor systems to uh, produce pharmaceuticals, enzymes, and hormones that we need. It's a great technology there as well, where tissue culture can do a lot more things um, using the techniques. Um, tissue culture is essential for conservation and rescue of plants, which I'm not going to talk a lot today. Um, we, we use um, cryobiotechnology, um, tissue culture coupled with uh, thermotherapy and cryotherapy. We can use this to conserve plants in very small areas uh, for a long, long period of time. Also, we use it for embryo rescue for, uh, to help breeding programs with many recalcitrant species. Tissue culture also is very important for genetic engineering, gene editing, mutational breeding, and polyploid development in producing new uh, varieties of plants or new breeds of plants. Uh, a very good example is our humble onion. Um, so uh, mutational breeding or polyploid breeding or polyploid development is uh, high, widely used in uh, onions or uh, bulb species. Um, also, a good example of mutational breeding, your, um, you know, house house plants, you, you see a lot of variegated, beautiful, colorful plants because people uh, apply tissue culture with mutational breeding uh, under, you know, gamma radian con radiation conditions, so on, to um, get beautiful, um, you know, um, uh, shade loving plants to get some variegated plants. Another component is pathogen elimination. This is a very crucial and very important uh, thing for our agriculture and horticulture sector. Um, our potatoes and um, especially strawberries, uh, we really need to establish pathogen elimination using cryotherapy as well as um, uh, thermotherapy techniques and tissue culture is an essential part of this uh, process. Artificial seeds. Um, this is another technique where we can produce large amount of somatic embryos through tissue culture techniques and then encapsulate in something called alginate beads and then easily spread or desiccate and store it. And um, this is highly uh, valuable technology for reforestation um, and um, spreading you know, uh, seeds in a more efficient ways in some of the, some of the forest areas. Um, as I mentioned, res research is also um, impacted by uh, tissue culture, in vitro culture and molecular studies are uh, going hand in hand. So tissue culture becomes an integral part of all these areas uh, of um, work that we do to improve our um, horticulture sector. So today I'll be mostly, uh, you know, um, concentrate on tissue culture as a propagation tool, as well as a plant improvement tool, taking a few examples from my research over the last eight years at COPY, uh, starting as a PhD student, as well as uh, after that as a postdoc for over the last three years. So it's a tissue culture is a great tool for propagation. Why? Because we can prepare or produce true to type uh, plants in a large quantities from selected plants that we really want to multiply. For an example, something like Phytophthora resistant um, avocado rootstock or a great strawberry variety, which has pineapple flavor. Um, also, it is allowing us to propagate plants using very, very limited amount of material. And we really don't need seeds to do it. Uh, it is a soil free and field free practice where we can you know, reduce the pesticide fertilizer um, applications. Uh, and it is a sustainable way of um, uh, uh, producing plants um, in tissue culture. Also, as I mentioned earlier, we can produce disease-free plants and we can produce plants throughout the year um, with very high efficiencies. 
And uh, all the tissue culture practices um, happening around the globe is they are scalable. So we have a huge potential to um, produce large number of plants uh, in a confined area, but in a very scalable way and a productive way. Um, and there are no environmental barriers for us to do this because we do it in-house and uh, control environment. So we can produce plants year round irrespective of what is happening outside our building. So when we look at the tissue culture industry around the globe, it is a, a very growing, like growing industry. Um, at the moment, it is about 390 million USD worth um, industry, but it is predicted that, that in 2030, uh, it will reach about you know, 900 million US dollars, um, the value of this industry. Again, um, we, we apply tissue culture technology in propagation. So whole, for whole heap of uh, different plant species, starting from banana to um, flower, flowering crops or flower plants um, to produce flowers, um, then uh, forest species for uh, wood, um, wood requirements. Uh, very recently, a lot of uh, fruit species starting from uh, apples to pears to now avocados. Um, and then the vegetable crops, a lot of ornamental crops, that is the hype actually has happened uh, during the COVID time that we need more plants in, inside our houses. Um, so the, the industry is booming in these areas. And this industry is growing at about 8.6%. Um, and it is predicted from 2020 to 2030, that will be the uh, growth that we see in this industry. So um, jumping into my uh, favorite, favorite crop, uh, uh, avocados. So clonal rootstock for avocado industry was a, a requirement uh, when I initially started my PhD in 20, 2015. Uh, so global production, even if you look at the data now, is increasing very, very rapidly uh, because avocado is a very nutritional fruit and people want to consume more and more avocados. Uh, so the global uh, production has to increase. In order to increase the production, one of the strategies is to increase the uh, um, cultivated area. And the other one is to change the cultural practice. So going from 400 plants per hectare to uh, I 800 plants per hectare or 1200 plants per hectare, which is high density planting practices. And the world is moving towards this. A um, lot of countries have started growing uh, avocados, including Australia uh, in high density planting um, practices. So that means we need more plants per year uh, than we used to um, um, plant. So avocado propagation, when we call, um, when we look at it, it is, uh, avocado is a grafted tree. So actually the propagation refers to the propagation of the rootstock. There are two different rootstocks that the, uh, the global industry, you know, using at the moment, uh, seedling rootstocks and clonal rootstocks. Seedling rootstocks, as you know, the name says, it is a germinated seed, but however, avocado is an open pollinated plant. So uh, every seed coming from a mother plant is genetically different to the mother plant. So if you use, seedling rootstocks for your, um, as a rootstock in your plant, then you will not, you know, um, secure all the beautiful characters that the rootstock mother plant has. Uh, however, it is the widely available, you know, resource and um, it's a comparatively ch cheap method of doing it, uh, but it depends on season and um, seeds uh, highly and we need to maintain a lot of orchards to uh, acquire these seeds. On the other hand, the clonal rootstocks, which I will explain a little bit later in detail, uh, they are rooted cuttings, but avocado rooting uh, is not a very easy thing to do. Um, but we get a genetically identical mother, like plant to the mother plant. And um, it's a really cumbersome, you know, uh, operation to do, uh, which I will show in my next slide, time consuming and resource intensive. Whatever the rootstock you use, both these rootstocks highly depend on depend on uh, the the number of you know seeds that you can gather and depend on the season. Also, there is a big risk of pest and disease um, transmission through these two propagation methods. So, as I said, clonal propagation of avocado is done through this Froelich and Platt double grafting method, which was uh, later on modified by Ernst, nineteen ninety nine. Um, it again starts from a seed. You germinate a seed and then you get a budwood uh, cutting from a rootstock mother plant and you graft onto it. Uh, once the graft is healed, you put it in this um, uh, dark chamber in, to etiolate these little buds. 
once the buds are etiolated, you will get a little shoot, white shoot that you can see here, down here um, in the picture. And we can apply uh, rooting hormones uh, in order to produce a uh, rooted rootstock. Um, once the rooted rootstock is obtained, then we'll have to do the second grafting of hash shion, the common uh, you know, uh, shion variety that we'd like to eat, on top of this to obtain the um, plantable tree. So down here, you see the real um, nursery operation seeds and then grafting the budwood, then getting the etiolated shoots, uh, then um, getting them to root. Once uh, they are rooted, you get these rooted um, cuttings of avocado rootstock plants. Um, as I said, this is a very uh, difficult and long procedure, which takes about 18 months to produce a plant. So tissue culture, uh, is a great tool in order to um, produce clonal plants. Uh, similarly, uh, to the same reasons that I explained earlier. Um, on top of that, actually speaking, for avocado, it will reduce uh, or remove the um, seeds and budwood and grafting from the equation if we start producing plants from uh, plants through tissue culture for avocados. And we can produce scalable uh, true to type plants in a large quantities um, in order to sustain the industry. So when I first started uh, my PhD, I looked at um, what has been done. So it was surprising for me to see that it has, the researchers have been trying to um, do this sort of clonal propagation for avocado mature plants for over 50 years. Um, and they have been very, very successful in saying the world how difficult avocado tissue culture is. And this work was actually, uh, my findings were um, published uh, in 2017 in this review article, um, how difficult it is and what are the problems in avocado tissue culture. They are very slow growing, no multiplication. Uh, they lose the vigor. All of a sudden they die in culture. Uh, they, have, they are extremely difficult to root, uh, very difficult to acclimatize, as well as um, the practices are not uh, translatable to industry. So those are the problems, and there was no um, industry-applicable method developed uh, when I started my PhD. Uh, in developing a tissue culture platform for avocado, we took into account that we need to propagate uh, mature cuttings because juvenile plants are easy to propagate. Uh, but actually speaking, juvenile plants, I mean, starting from a seed seedling plant is not a value for the industry. We need to make sure that we um, propagate this from selected mature plants that are um, selected for their elite um, characteristics. Also, we need to aim for high multiplication rates, uh, produce very high quality plants, which are disease and pest and disease free. free. Um, also should have the uh, capacity to translate this to the industry scalable application. Um, in setting up uh, the, the, the procedures for, for a, commercial opera, a commercial, uh, commercially viable technology development, we started with developing a, a proof of concept and then scaling up uh, trials in our um, QBP lab and then taking the plants from jars to the to outside um, environment. And then once these uh, plants are ready uh, in, to a certain, certain size, um, taking them to the nursery uh, environment to see whether the nursery practices are adaptable. Uh, also test next stage to um, test these plants in field conditions to make sure that these plants are true to type to the mother plants. And then finally, graft these pl plants with hash shions to uh, evaluate their productivity, how they produce fruits, whether they are you know, producing fr fruits the way that we want them to be. So as a tissue culturist, um, sometimes tissue culture sounds very simple to many people, but uh, this is what we have to deal with. So we are going to communicate with a little plant tissue uh, which doesn't understand my language. My mother tongue is Sinhalese uh, and my second language is English, but uh, they don't understand my language. So I have to talk to these plant tissues through a different language. So the tissue culturist language is this. Uh, as you can see, so many different variables, micronutrients, macronutrients, plant hormones, energy sources, different substrates during um, uh, rooting stage. Uh, and we communicate the plant to produce a little bud or throw out a root through 
changing all these conditions uh, in our inside our vessel as well as outside our vessel. So for propagation, we can actually use three different basic techniques. One is, um, say, I will first draw your attention to nodal culture, which is very simple, uh, which is the highest practice or biggest practice in uh, woody plants. You take a little node, um, as with all tissue culture practices, we first take the little cutting from a plant and then we clean it um, using different chemicals to get rid of all the bacteria and fungi um, that it has and then establish a clean culture. Once we establish a clean culture, we will um, give some signals to the plant through this media or changing the light conditions or temperature to grow into a little bud. So once this little shoot grows, then we can actually use this to multiply through nodal section. So this is nodal culture and it is a direct organogenesis method uh, which give you uh, true to type plants and has a very low risk of um, producing mutants or stromoclonal variation. Meristem culture, on the other hand, is a bit difficult technique, but it is the best technique to produce higher volume, volume of plants with, um, with stable uh, multiplication. It is again a direct organogenesis method. Um, and the third method is the regeneration through callus, which is an indirect method. So in this method, we produce a mass of callus or mass of cells, and then give the signals to those cells to regenerate into little plants. However, this method uh, is a bit risky when you want to produce clonal plants um, because it can induce um, some clonal variation due to this higher high multiplication rates or division of uh, high rate of division in, in, in cells of these tissues. So starting with the nodal culture for avocado, uh, as I explained before, um, numerous optimizations were done um, from basal nutrient media to gelling agents to the incubation conditions to the cu culture vessel. So in this method, what we do is we try and grow a little shoot and then uh, se segment it to uh, small nodal sections and um, culture it again and again for a couple of cycles uh, to obtain large number of uh, shoots. Once the shoots are ready, we can subject them to rooting treatments to obtain a rooted plant. Very, uh, uh, this is a, 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 a one example how the how one particular um, variable can change the um, the health of the culture. So you see here uh, the three pictures of three different media that I have used basal media compositions that I've used for one um, one uh, type of uh, rootstock. And you can see like, um, you know, the first picture says, shows that it's dead and not very happy. Second picture is something is there, but not the quality that we want. But then the third um, picture shows that, you know, beautiful shoots. So the plants are very happy. Um, and um, this is sort of the quality that we look at uh, when we do tissue culture, um, tissue culturing of the plants. Very early on in nodal culture process, I realized that uh, there are a lot of problems, even though we get nice healthy shoots, uh, it is very difficult to maintain plants in long-term culture, as well as the multiplication rates were very, very poor. And some of, the, some of our um, successful uh, findings were published here as well in uh, World Avocado Congress in 2015. Um, as you can see here, Velvic Reed, Kidan has all these um, rootstocks, as well as has a Shion, uh, were performing very poorly when it comes to multiplication rate. So uh, this is not a very viable system. However, um, we went ahead and uh, got some uh, really good results with rooting as well as acclimatized um, to make sure that we can actually produce a nice plant in tissue culture, even though this is not uh, what we need for commercial application. Uh, then I thought that we'll take the difficult pathway because meristem culture is the most difficult technique in tissue culture, especially for woody crops. We, woody crops are very recalcitrant to this, uh, this technique. Uh, it is a technique where we take a very, very tiny piece of tissue from a meristem bud, which is the most stable um, multiplying tissues of a, a, a little shoot bud or a root bud. Uh, and then culture it to produce large number of plants. So it starts again with sterilization and we extract this tiny piece of tissue or tiny 0.1 millimeter uh, uh, meristematic dome and induce it to produce uh, little buds. Once the buds are produced, we can multiply it in several cycles. Um, and once we get this enough multiplication cycles, we can again tell, the, tell these tissues to throw out 
few more shoots, uh, some nice elongated shoots, which are then can be harvested for rooting. So at every every uh, every step, the media composition and the culture conditions are going to be different for um, avocado. And after about um, you know reading about this um, um, meristem culture, whether it has been applied before in avocados, I found that the the you know the latest paper was 1982, so you know 50 years sort of you know um, work has been done. Uh, but really um, not, not successful at, at that time. So after about two, two years uh, worth of uh, trial and error, as well as uh, testing um, numerous, uh, numerous variables, um, at some experiments, about 45, uh, 45 to like, you know, 35 to 45 different uh, treatments, um, finally, we were able to develop a beautiful system for uh, first uh, rootstock, avocado rootstock reed, which you can see here, the meristem induction, multiplication, shoot elongation, and then uh, rooting and acclimatization. So this was again published as a book chapter uh, in 2020. Um, and when we wanted to move these plants from um, you know, rooted plants to the acclimatization stage, um, we, I, I very, very soon realized uh, they are not behaving as other tissue culture plants that I had experience with. Um, so we had to improve the acclimatization process in order to get higher survival rates. So some root uh, soaking treatments were introduced. Uh, also the dome cover duration had to, had to be tested and there, are, there was several other uh, things that we uh, tested uh, in these uh, experiments. Um, also a new acclimatization method in order to facilitate the industry translation, a new INJA acclimatization technique was also developed through this uh, research. And this work was also published um, uh, in uh, Acta Horticulture um, solely on acclimatization of this reed avocado. Um, then we move into the next uh, rootstock, which is an Australian rootstock, um, Welwick. Uh, it's a very uh, productive, consistent, highly high yielding, this is tolerant uh, rootstock, um, Australian rootstock. Um, it also had a really difficulty uh, and we found that the cultivar is where all rootstock is very specific to the nutrient medium that we use in every stage. Uh, for Velvic, um, uh, there was an additional step as well, uh, as you can see, in vitro hardening, where uh, I had to optimize a protocol um, to make the plant ready for rooting. So this is a new, new addition to normal tissue culture uh, process that you won't see in many of the you know, published work in any, any other species. Uh, and when we started trying to um, root, as well as acclimatize Velvic, um, uh, we found that it, it was very difficult to root and uh, acclimatize Velvic. So um, I went, went back to you know, um, the basic sciences and wanted to investigate this, uh, looking at the structure of these di two different um, rootstocks, reed and Velvic, um, looked at the glasshouse plants and then in vitro, like our tissue culture plants, as well as some etiolated plants that I obtained from the nursery, um, where they do normal clonal, uh, clonal rooting uh, of avocados. Uh, also, these etiolated shoots I kept in light and deetiolated to see what happens, you know, during this process. Um, and it was very, very nice findings in this work that I did. I could actually see a very clear difference in reed and velvic structure when you look at the stem. I could see a continuous fascicular cambium. If you see, look at the uh, first panel. This is the glasshouse maintained plants you see a very continuous fascicular cambium in reed stem, whereas you don't have it in um, velvic. Uh, and glass, uh, not only the glasshouse plants, our tissue culture plants also showed the similar sort of you know, structure of the stem. And when I look at the etiolated plants, I was curious to see whether this continuous fascicular cambium is there in velvic. Yes, I could see that continuous fascicular cambium in etiolated shoots. So saying that that is needed for rooting, um, and once you deetiolate it, um, it actually disappears. So, um, and here in this picture, you can see that, you know, that uh, root initials are formed from this fascicular cambium area. Um, so this was a good finding. Uh, 
Um, also to support the acclimatization or get more insight into why acclimatization is difficult, looked at the st stomates of the two um, uh, rootstocks. And I could see that um, stomatal density was um, very high in reed, uh, sorry, very high in velvic compared to reed. And even in in vitro grown plants, it was very similar. Uh, the other thing wanted to note here is like the uh, velvic had very smaller cells. So you have larger amount of cells increasing the um, surface area that has that is available for uh, water loss uh, compared to reed. Also look at the root structure. These, these two are not, on, uh, not the only you know, parameters we checked or the characters we checked, there are a few more, uh, but uh, looking at the reed and velvic root structure, we could really see that um, reed had a very well developed secondary uh, phloem compared to velvic. Velvic had very few, you know, uh, flow, uh, xylem vessels um, with secondary thickening. So this suggests that, you know, um, for acclimatization, the roots are not supportive enough to send, you know, absorb uh, water and send it through to the leaves to keep the leaf, leaves um, moist. So, the possible ex explanation for difficulty in root initiation and ex extension was like Velvic has a thin layer of vascular cambium, high amount of lignified vascular phloem, and less amount of active, active uh, xylem rays. And acclimatization as well, Velvic has higher surface area to volume ratio, so it increased the water loss, as well as Vel Velvic has lesser amount of xylem vesicles, uh, so it reduces the water supply to the shoot. Um, so the, these findings actually help us to solve some problems in acclimatization and rooting and change our media and the treatments we do in order to um, improve this system. And this work was very recently published to, I think, four weeks ago um, in Plant Biology Journal. Um, so our plants then reach the nursery, um, um, grown really beautifully in the nursery uh, environment. And the morph morphology trials to check whether these plants are true to tripe to the mother plant was started in 2017. And they fruited in the, uh, flowered in the first year that they pl were planted and had beautiful root systems um, and produced the similar fruit to the mother plants, um, confirming that they are morphologically similar, similar to the mother plant. A similar work was also conducted and started in 2019 for Velvic. Again, very homogeneous plants, beautifully grown within two years. Uh, they set fruits uh, with beautiful root systems as well as um, true to type to the mother plant. Um, the initial productivity trials were started to compare um, uh, the rootstocks, tissue culture rootstocks with the nursery clones as well as seedling rootstocks um, grafted with has shion on top. And um, in three years, um, so they started flowering as normal plants. Graft take was uh, very similar, similar um, across the board. Um, and then I have put here the third year um, data, um, and we see the tissue color rootstocks are performing a, you know, give say that the number value is a bit higher, but they don't show any significant difference um, when you compare it with seedling or nursery clones. So they are very productive uh, as similar to the other two, you know, uh, commercially available rootstocks, um, root, rootstock type and perform really well in the field. Um, so this is this year's um, um, produce and the plants are still producing really well, even though the project is uh, done and dusted, we still take all these, um, um, you know, measurements and take time to go harvest, count every tree and get the uh, data for productivity trials. So the large productivity trials for reed uh, rootstocks um, grafted with had, has was conducted by Dr. Maddie Gleason. And uh, this work was done uh, in large trials. When, when we talk about large trials, this, these trials included five different uh, locations around Australia in different climatic conditions. And some of our plants were also in trellis as well. Um, and uh, she compared the, the um, tissue culture rootstock drafted with has with in, uh, the industry standard at the moment for reed is like um, seedling rootstocks grafted with has. So um, this work was uh, done uh, over the last three years. And then uh, the data I'm just showing here only for the Childers trial, uh, which is closest to our, our um, university. Um, and we see the similar pattern that I, that I have seen in the small trials. 
there was no difference in fruit yield, mean fruit mass or fruit count uh, when it comes to the productivity. And if you want more details about this, uh, these trials for uh, every location, the data for every location, um, it is available at this uh, address. Uh, if you go into this link, you will be able to find more details about this work. So then we accelerated this work to the other rootstock, Zutano, Kid, and Dusa. Um, and we were able to develop uh, very nice systems for these um, three rootstocks as well. Uh, acclimatized plants here, as you can see, and then Suntano and Kid also uh, now uh, been you know, transferred to the nursery for nursery trials. Um, at the end of you know, all this, uh, we have actually developed a smart, smart and sustainable avocado propagation system, which is now commercialized with uh, Anderson's horticulture. Um, and it, it is a, a system where we can produce avocado plants year round. We don't need seeds. We don't need budwood to you know, supply uh, you know, in different uh, times. And it will allow us to produce um, disease-free plants throughout the year in large quantities and gives us another reason to call our avocados our green gold. And similar technology, again, um, in another, um, for, for another industry, coronal plants for Duboisia industry. So Duboisia is an Australian native um, and the leaves are very important of this plant species uh, for scopolamine extraction. So scopolamine is uh, an active ingredient of bascopan. So, you must have heard uh, the motion sickness. So that is the chemical that, or the active ingredient that treats the motion sickness. It is a, a very important industry for Australia, about $100 million worth. And Australia is the world leader in scopolamine uh, production, actually. Um, uh, Duboisia leaf you know, production for scopolamine extraction. Um, similar challenges, again, in Duboisia clonal propagation when it comes to the industry. Um, you need large amount of area area to uh, you know um, do cuttings um, of this Duboisia species, um, and then uh, the the plants will lose their capacity to root with time. The mother plant, so that is why uh, you need a solution for Duboisia uh, you know propagation through tissue culture. However, when I initially start this work in 2019 very similar problems, uh, leaf defoliation, less vigor, and like, you know, continuation in culture was very difficult. Uh, it produced large callus, it was difficult to root, and all these problems were there. Um, and however, with a lot of work, uh, as well as uh, initial work done by me for two species, but then joining with my uh, PhD student, very hardworking PhD student, Eugene, um, we have been able to give a beautiful uh, meristem culture-based propagation system for Duboisia. Um, all three species, um, uh, the three species uh, in Australia, as well as uh, two hybrids and um, few selections as well. Uh, and we can get a very vigorous multiplication um, from starting from one shoot tip. We can actually produce about over a thousand little plantlets within five months, less than actually five months and we can produce really high quality plants. As you can see here, this, this culture system is a bit different to avocado system. We use um, liquid induction, sort of meristem induction system, and then multiplication cycles are simple. Um, and then we go to rooting um, in different substrates. Again, for different uh, species here, different hybrids and the selections, we need to optimize this culture media and conditions different. So they, they also do show a lot of um, species specific or cultivar specific, specific requir requirements for tissue culture conditions. Um, they, it has been gone into the uh, acclimatization stage, so we get 100% survival. Um, and we, we were able to actually start uh, the field trials in far north Queensland, as well as here, um, here in Queensland, um, uh, with the help of um, Dr. Patrick Mason. So he conducts uh, Duboisia trials for about last two years to compare tissue culture plants as well as uh, cutting propagated plants. And we see that tissue culture plants are thriving and they uh, produce um, much more uh, vegetative growth uh, compared to um, slow growing cutting propagated plants. Um, not only for tissue culturing of the exact um, you know, um, genetics, but we were being assisting breeding program of uh, uh, Duboisia as well through our work. 
Um, so Dubois' seeds are very difficult to germinate and they have a very poor germination percentage and it takes very long time to germinate as well. And you can see here up in the top, um, if you try and germinate uh, Dubois' seeds um, through normal ex vitro conditions, they are very slow. Um, and and we, we, were, uh, we were trying to uh, achieve germination through in vitro uh, techniques. And initially it was very difficult, uh, but Yushin's you know, um, inputs and uh, his um, hard work has paid off and we could actually produce um, starting from seeds to this stage here, beautiful, uh, you know, nicely grown tissue culture plants within three months, which normally takes a lot longer than that. So we, we could actually give a good solution for um, breeding program in order to produce uh, beautiful plants for propagation requirements. And not only, um, not only that, so in, in, this, in this work, uh, we have actually assisted uh, this breeding program by germinating about two, more, over 250 seedlings um, to select high uh, scopolamine containing uh, breeding lines. And then um, not only that, but also when we select the high scopolamine containing uh, breeding lines, we retook it into the tissue culture process and started multiplying them so that we can actually produce, um, produce large number of plants for field trials. So this is again, a different uh, sort of culture media conditions here um, for five different, um, high scopolamine lines that Patrick Mason has selected through uh, his breeding program. Um, another aspect or another application of uh, tissue culture for Dubuizia improvement, uh, we are trying to use um, protoplast technology in order to, in order to produce um, polyploids and also develop a platform uh, of protoplast technology so that our molecular biologists can develop techniques uh, using genetic engineering to uh, change some genes and increase the scopolamine co content of this Dubuisia species. Um, just a little bit of intro here. Protoplast fusion for crop is a, it's a technique that is being used uh, in horticulture sector. Um, you can see here, you know, tomato and um, uh, potato is growing in the same plant because of the fused, you know, uh, fused nature of these um, cells. And once the few cell regenerate, they have the capacity to produce tomatoes as well as potatoes. Um, so when we fuse um, cells, a naked cell uh, devoid of a cell wall, uh, it can end up becoming, a, you know, uh, having two sets of chromosomes or more than two sets of chromosomes. And in literature, it shows that several plants, when we do this, um, can produce large leaves, vigorous growth, larger plants. So, which is exactly going to help the Duboisia industry by increasing the leaf size, we can actually increase the amount of, you know, dry leaf weight that we can harvest per hectare. So that itself will increase the production per hectare. Um, here, my beautiful, you know, and hardworking student, PhD student, Eugene, and this slide was actually prepared by him to illustrate what he's trying to do in this uh, uh, process. So he's actually trying to uh, combine two different hybrids, which has la uh, somewhat high scopolamine content, uh, and then the other one having a large leaf size. So that when we mix these together, we will get a larger leaf and la higher scopolamine content overall, getting a better performing uh, hybrid. So to, in order to do this, the first, first step will be to actually uh, show, the, um, show the capacity to regenerate plants from this uh, protoplast. So mesophyll protoplast isolation and mesophyll protoplast regeneration for Dubuisia species has never, never been done before um, and has not been successful. For, so for the first time, uh, we were able to actually, um, Yushin has been able to successfully isolate um, uh, Dubuisia protoplast from mesophyll cells. Um, and then purify it, and then put it in a specific media for induce it to callus, and then optimize the protocol to regenerate uh, these, um, you know, uh, little plants from these callus tissues. So this will give us a basis actually to fuse um, Duboisia protoplast and then use this protocol to regenerate it. Not only that, but also this will be a platform for our molecular biologists out there uh, to try and you know edit genes or using you know these protoplasts and then 
you know, try and uh, regenerate these this, uh, transformed plants using this sort of uh, technology available. Um, again, another industry that we tried to help was the cannabis industry. So cannabis is also uh, industry where a clonal propagation is very important um, to maintain the higher amount of CD, CBD and THC levels. Um, again, in, in normal industry practice, they will have they have to um, use large amount of mother plants and they keep cutting, taking cuttings from these mother plants, which exhaust the mother plant and then reduce the capacity of um, rootability of these mother plants. Um, on the other hand, they will have to replace these mother plants every, every two years or so, uh, sometimes even less than that, because, um, because um, they, they lose the vegetative, um, vegetative uh, growth nature of the mother plant uh, in a long run. So if we do um, can apply this uh, cannabis, um, tissue culture for cannabis, then we have the ability to produce plants in large numbers um, using very, very small amount of uh, mother plants. And we really don't bother about the, the age of the mother plant. We can actually keep the mother plant aging without any problem. Uh, initially, when I started this work in 2020, as I remember, um, similar problems. It wasn't a weed, as we call it as a weed. I really expect it to behave as a weed in tissue culture, but it never did. Um, so lots of problems, again, leaf defoliation, uh, yellowing of leaves. It was very difficult to maintain, maintain them uh, in culture um, in a long run. Um, and it had very, very high level of hyperhidricity where the leaves become glassy and you know um, not viable in tissue culture conditions. However, um, using um, you know our optimization skills as well as you know talking to these tissues every day, um, couple of times a day, uh, we were able to develop a beautiful system for um, two different selections of cannabis sativa. Uh, it, which gives about more than 100 times uh, multiplication rate and with 100% rootability. And it was a very short period of multiplication cycle, which, which is a requirement of cannabis industry because of the high turnover of, of the number of the plants that they need for their propagation uh, or like main, uh, maintenance requirements. So um, to finish my uh, talk actually, uh, I just really want to emphasize TC is an essential tool in plant research and horticulture industry uh, as a plant propagation tool, modification tool, improvement tool, conservation tool, disease elimination tool. And it's a platform technology for application of other novel technologies for plant improvement. You can really look it as a, look it as, as a tree which branch out to all the other uh, beautiful technologies and sciences we do um, in, in every scientist's life. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joni. Uh, great talk. Uh, I'll open the floor up for people for questions. Uh, if you just type in the question and answer box. Um, I might start off a question with uh, Joni. Um, so what do you think are the key factors uh, for tissue culture when you're developing a new system for a new plant? What are um, the yeah, so to answer that question, uh, Chris, um, actually speaking, like I'll take an example of woody plant uh, yep. because yep. woody plants are very complex and they are very, um, uh, they are very sort of um, engaged with the environment they grow. They have very specific nutrients needs and uh, environmental condition, condition needs. So we have to first look at um, all those things and how they grow and all those little things um, that makes that plant happy, understand that, and then start from there, we can decide um, on, you know, uh, what sort of nutrient media and conditions that we need to uh, supply um, in order to, you know, get a, a system established for tissue culture of woody plants. However, um, it doesn't mean that like a plant that grows in, you know, uh, 37 Celsius or, you know, 47 Celsius will, would, would like to have the same sort of environment in tissue culture conditions. Sometimes, you know, um, we'll have to change all those um, things in order to make the multiplication very viable. Yeah. Anyone else got any questions? Oh, just another quick one. How long does it take to regenerate a plant from the Du Bois protoplast? 
Um, so um, it's a bit of a lengthy process, actually. So normally, um, when we start from, say, protoplast, it has a it has microcalli development, sort of a bit lengthier process. However, we will be able to regenerate a plant within a, within about six months, uh, starting from a protoplast. Um, our initial experiment took a bit longer because we were optimizing, you know, um, trying to find out what hormone regime will it uh, respond. But yeah, so about six months um, uh, to get a like, you know, a field ready plant from a starting yep. from a yeah uh, protoplast. Oh, I don't see any other questions coming in. Um, oh, hang on, here's one. How much does it cost to produce a tissue culture avocado plant? Um, question. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, so I've done all the calculations uh, that I can actually give a round figure, but I wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, it, within, it, it depends on uh, how much, um, you know, uh, your labor cost. Labor cost is the biggest cost in, in Australia. Say in a country like Australia, we will be able to produce a, a, a sort of, um, say, acclimatized plant uh, within a $5 mark. Okay. Are there any other questions? All right, I might uh, wrap up this seminar then. Uh, thanks very much, Danny, for your presentation today. No uh, worries, my pleasure, Chris. Go to the next slide, please. Yeah. So if you haven't already signed up to the seminar invitation list, uh, please do at the coffeeuq.edu.au science seminars. Um, We'd also invite anyone who has watched our science seminars to give us feedback by scanning the QR code on the right. Uh, this will help uh, shape the science seminar series in the coming coming year. Uh, I'd invite everyone to tune in to next week's seminar at uh, the same time. A couple of scientists from Germany will be giving their presentation. So thanks for tuning in today. And Goodbye.